going to start by removing these two nuts for this heat shield. We have to get this out of the way because it's covering part of the tank. So I'm going to start here, 10 millimeter socket. Let's do the same to this one over here. There we go. Now you can pull this down. And what I'm going to do instead of taking the whole shield down is I'm just going to pull it and bend it out of the way a little bit. Now I want to disconnect these two main fuel lines, the feed and the return. I'm going to take two picks and basically there's two little tabs here. I'm going to pry out and down on those. That should release the connector. Okay, pull that out. Now with that bottom green clip undone, that's basically just a lock for the top clip. You have to press down on the top. Okay, sliding out, let's set that aside and then right up above is another one just the same and that one is white, not green, so we'll have to do the same to that one. Okay, there's the clip. Use the pliers to try to squeeze on this clip. Hopefully that'll unlock the line. Oh, there it goes, just broke free. Now let's take this seven millimeter hose clamp off, or don't take it off all the way, but loosen it so we can take the filler neck hose off. Break it free, push it up, grab the filler neck hose and pull it right off of the tank. I'm just gonna push it up above. All right, so I have my support here. If you're on the ground, you can use whatever you have to support the fuel tank, but at this point, we're gonna be removing the straps and the straps are what's holding it in, so you need to hold it. And I'm gonna take the straps down with the tank, which is why on this side right here, I have my support going right over the strap. I'm not worried about it. I put minimal pressure on this so we can hold it. And now with a 13 millimeter socket, I'm gonna take off the three mounting bolts for the straps. Just follow the straps and there's one on each end. Last one is at the front here. Now slowly lower your support. The tank should come right down with it. But don't go too far because the fuel pump is still connected with an electrical connector. So we'll have to remove that. But for now, make sure that nothing is getting caught. There it goes. Set that aside. Let's lower it down a little bit more so we can get to the fuel pump connector, which is actually at the front of the tank. This is stuck on here. So lift this up. There we go. Pop that off. All right, at this point we can get to the fuel pump connector, which is over here. Now the connector is right here from the front side. That's where the locking tab is. I'm going to put a screwdriver in, press it in, and lift it up at the same time. There it goes. That's disconnected. So the only thing left is this line right here. So here's the line that goes to the side of the tank. Unclip it, just like the other ones, and now you want to press up on this. Looks like this one's not stuck. And pull it off of the tank. Set it aside. Now we can finish lowering the fuel tank completely. And nothing else should be in the way of it coming down all the way. At this point, we have three nuts holding on this bracket. Let's remove all those. They're 10 millimeter nuts. I don't recommend using electric tools because they can create sparks. And you know what happens when you mix sparks and fuel, or fuel fumes, I should say. So either use air tools or hand tools. Take off all three of these 10 millimeter nuts. I did pre-spray them with rust penetrant because they were pretty rusty. So it looks like that helped. Last one. Right, now we can lift up this bracket, set it aside. And the next thing I want to do is disconnect this hose right here, which if you flip around, you can take off the uh, locking tab, just like all the other ones that we've taken off so far. Flip it back down, press this, and slide it right off. There it is. Some fuel comes out. Now we have to take this ring and spin it counterclockwise and that will unlock the ring from these tabs here and release the fuel pump. Ideally, you wanna use a brass punch because 
metal on metal will make sparks. Okay, pull this up and out. Now our fuel pump is ready to come out. Lift it, now be careful because it is full of fuel in this little uh, bowl area. So I'm gonna try and drain as much of it into the tank as possible. I'm gonna give this a second to drain. It's got some drain holes at the bottom and then I'll pull it out and put it into a collection bucket that I have. Lift it up and out, make sure this doesn't get caught. And I'm gonna put it right here to my collection bucket. That way it can finish draining and we can get ready to install the new pump. Now if you're reusing your old gasket, make sure it's still malleable, nice and soft, which this one is. And of course, clean up any debris that might be under there so that it can make a nice tight seal. Now take your new fuel pump, drop it down into the tank. And remember that this tab here lined up right over here. So towards the corner of the fuel pump or the fuel tank, I mean, it's important to put it in the same position. That way the connector and the uh, lines come out the same way. Press it down, take your locking ring. And this also had a specific way that it went. That way the bracket can bolt up to cover this part here. Start it on by hand and then take your hammer and a punch and lock it in. Okay, that should be fully locked in. The next step is to um, put this line back on, make sure it clicks into place, flip it around and put the lock on. Now get this cover, put it back on here, start on the three nuts that hold it on. And let's tighten these up. Now we can get ready to put the fuel tank back in the car. At this point, I have my fuel tank almost where it needs to be, and I'm gonna keep raising it so I can connect my fuel pump. Press the connector on, make sure it locks in, which it just did. Now I'm gonna continue bringing it up, but before I go too far, I have a hose or a line right here that needs to get connected. Press it on, it should click into place, and then don't forget the little locking uh, tab. That makes sure it doesn't come popping off later. Now let's keep raising this up. Make sure it doesn't get caught on the heat shield or doesn't get pinch any other lines here. All right, everything's lined up. I'm gonna bring it up all the way until all the strap uh, mounting holes line up. The front lines up, let's check the back. The back is a little bit off. It's all right, we can fix that. There we go, just like that. Bring the bolts up and start them in. I'm not gonna tighten them yet. I wanna get all of them started and then position the fuel tank where it needs to be. Then I will tighten all of them. Let's get this front one in. Now that they're all in, I'm just gonna go ahead and snug them all up. Now we can take our support off and the tank will stay in place. Let's put the filler neck hose back in, slide it on all the way to make sure it's properly seated, get the clamp, and let's tighten it up. Let's reconnect the fuel lines here, connect the top one. Of course, don't forget the locks. Okay, that's on. Let's connect this other hose. Let's put the lock on this one also. There you go. Let's reattach the heat shield. All right, inside the car, I'm gonna put the key in the ignition and turn it two clicks. That's the on position. I'm gonna leave it right here for a few seconds. This is making the fuel pump run and it's priming it and therefore getting all the air out of the system. I'm gonna shut it off, bring it to the on position again. I like to do this three, four, maybe even five times after I do a fuel pump. Again, that gets all the air out of the system. That way it doesn't spit and sputter when you first turn on the car. Now that I've done this a few times, let's try to turn on the car. Run smooth, that's perfect. Take it for a road test.